Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat yeah. and Quaker puffed rice, yeah. the breakfast cereal shot from guns, yeah. Yeah. present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, placing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <whistles> There's the kickoff, and the game is on. Whether it's football you like to play or any other sport, you need a hearty breakfast. So start tomorrow to enjoy a breakfast of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish extra health benefits of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And they're shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with swell, nut-like flavor, too. Don't wait. It's the hearty breakfast you like to eat. Quaker puff rice or Quaker puff wheat. Old Timer had been one of the best sled dogs in the Yukon during his day, but he was growing very old now, and even during the summer months, he found it hard to find food. That was why King dropped into the habit of bringing him to the Northwest Mounted Barracks for his meals. Sergeant Preston took one look at Old Timer's teeth and prepared some soft food for him. When it was placed before the old husky, King sniffed at it and looked up at his master. He seemed to be asking, is this the way we treat a guest? There's caribou steak for you, King. But you just watch Old Timer. I think he'll like this stew better. And Old Timer did. In fact, he liked his rations at the barracks so well that he returned there day after day. And today, old-timer, the Northwest Mounted is happy to serve you bouillabaisse. English translation, fish chowder. <laughs> then the freeze-up came, and the sergeant readied his dog team for the first of the winter patrols. Just before he left on it, he asked Corporal Downey to make sure that old-timer had enough to eat. Ah, you can depend on it, sergeant. I'll fix his food so he can eat it. Good. Get away from there, old-timer. Oh, what's the matter? Why is he nipping at your wheel, dog? He wants to take his place. Still can't believe that he's too old to hit the trail. Is he, though? Looks to be in pretty good condition to me. He is, but during the winter, frozen fish is just about the only food we can carry for the dogs. And he can't eat it anymore. Yeah, a little extra effort, and the man could prepare something special for him. Do that, and you'll ruin the morale of your team. Once you're on the trail, every dog must be treated alike, or there's trouble. You mean to say that King doesn't get an extra little uh, tidbit every now and then? Not on the trail. Light him up, boy. No, whether old-timer likes it or not, the trail's no place for him. I'll see you in about two weeks, Jim. Have a good trip. Here, old-timer, you stay here, boy. All right. Fun, King. Fun, Husky. The sergeant returned from his trip on schedule, and as he was feeding the team once more in the run behind the barracks, he noticed that King didn't seem to be interested in his food. He seemed to be looking for someone. And then the sergeant realized. Why, it's feeding time and old-timer isn't here. Is that who you miss, boy? Jim, come here a second, will you? Right with you, sergeant. What is it? Where's old-timer? I don't know. He hasn't been around for the last three days. I wonder if something's happened to him. Search me. I haven't seen him around town, either. Well, you go ahead and eat, King. We'll see if we can find old-timer tonight. <laughs> The sergeant asked for news of old-timer all over town that evening. And finally, at the Monte Carlo... Zach, sure remember the dog I mean, Silver Gray Husky. 
Harry Westcott's wheel dog. Sure, I remember him. Good dog, too. I saw him the day before yesterday. Where? Here in town. He was working with a team, and how he loved it. Oh, I don't think we're talking about the same dog. Well, I'm talking about old time. Well, he's too old to work with a team. You wouldn't say that if you'd seen him leaning into those traces. Well, he's strong enough. As long as whoever it is that has him doesn't take him out on the trail. Well, that's where he was heading. You're sure, Tex? Positive. What's wrong with his hitting the trail? Well, he can't eat trail rations. If his food isn't specially prepared for him, he'll starve. Oh, too bad. You'd think a man would realize would have enough sense well, to The not... men who are using them are cheap chocos, green as they come. A dog's a dog to them. What are their names? Brent and Lyndon. At least that's what they call themselves. Why do you say that? Well, no reason, just personal prejudice. I'd call them a couple of rats, except I got too much respect for rats. You don't think they'll give old timer any special treatment? Maybe a good beating if he doesn't pull his weight. Well, they won't get away with it. You know where they were heading? Hmm, up the Klondike toward Grand Ledge. Grand Ledge. I have to make a patrol up there. There's no reason why I shouldn't start right away. If I'd only known that old timer could... That's all right, Tex. We'll make sure he isn't mistreated. Brent and Lyndon have no real claim to him. Come on, King. We're going to find old timer. The following morning in the town of Grand Ledge, Nancy Croydon slipped into a parka long before it was light and walked down the main street to the Northern Trading Company's store. She met Herbert Gridley, the local manager, as he was just about to open the front door. I don't think the door's locked, Mr. Gridley. What's that? Is Bill here already? Well, you knew he was working late last night, and he, he must have fallen asleep. He didn't come home. Well, let's see. Oh, he locked the door anyway. Maybe he went to sleep on the cot out in the storeroom. Come in, come in, Mrs. Croyd. We'll wake him up and send him home with you for some breakfast. You understand, Mr. Gridley, I don't mind his working late, but well, this staying here without letting me know, I, I woke up a little after midnight Wait. and I... Wait, good heavens. Look, what's the matter? The safe's open. Now, that's carelessness. <laughs> with Bill here and the door locked? Mrs. Croydon, all the miner's gold is gone. Bill! Wake up! Wait! Why isn't here? The cot hasn't been slept on. He's gone. Gone? Your husband's gone, Mrs. Croydon. Oh, oh, he couldn't be. He must be somewhere around the town if he isn't here. Don't you realize what he's done? I don't know what you're talking about. He's stolen all the gold that I've been keeping for the miners in my safe. Well, that isn't true. The facts speak for themselves. He's gone and so is the gold. Oh, my husband's not a thief. Well, I suppose it was because of Davy he did it. I won't let you say such a thing. He wanted Davy to have that operation on his foot so he could run and play like the other boys. I don't really blame him for feeling the way he did. Mr. Gridley. It was something he wanted so much he didn't care what he did to get the money. You've got to stop taking it for granted that Bill's a thief. He couldn't do such a thing. Not even for Dave. Naturally, this is a shock to you. But how can I ever explain to the miners? It's their loss, of course. I'm not responsible in any way. But what shall I say to them? They trusted Bill as much as I did. If someone stole the gold, it wasn't Bill. That reminds me. Of what? When I woke up last night, I, I went to the window and I, I saw a couple of men down here by the store. They were driving a dog team and heading out of town. Now, perhaps Wait, they had... was Bill one of them? No. You're sure? Absolutely. They were much larger men. Well, they couldn't have had anything to do with it. Why not? Unless they were Bill's accomplices. Don't you understand, Nancy? Outside of myself, Bill's the only one who knew the combination to the safe. And it wasn't forced open. We had a light snow last night. It should be easy to follow their trail. I'm not going to stand for an accusation such as you've made without fighting back, Mr. Gridley. I'm going after those oh, men. Oh, you're just hysterical, Mrs. Croydon. This is a matter for the police. And by the time you get word to Dawson, they'll be... No. No, I'm going after and them. And suppose you find Bill with them. What then? Perhaps they held him up. Perhaps he followed them. That's it. Oh, no, it isn't. Try to calm yourself and think clearly. I'm going to follow that trail. Mrs. Croydon hurried from the store and down the street to the Gordons. She asked Mrs. Gordon to take care of Davy for the day and then ran on to her own home. Davy, where are you? I'm out in the kitchen, Mom. Have you had your breakfast? It's all ready. I'm all finished. Oh, that's fine. Davy, I'm going out of town for a little while and, and you're going to stay with Mrs. Gordon until I get back. I'll get your park. Where are you going? Can I come too? Not this time, dear. It's business for your father. But I'll be back in a few hours, I'm sure. Here you are. Oh, Mrs. Gordon, let me play with Spot. <laughs> of course. I wish I had a dog. Uh, well, we'll try and find you one. Come on, darling. All right, Mom. 
At noon that day, Sergeant Preston was within two miles of Grand Ledge. And as the team neared the point where the hill trail joined the main one, King slowed up and looked back at his master. The sergeant stepped on the brake. Oh, there. Oh, you What is it, boy? Well, I can see the tracks of a sled and the prints the dogs left. They came from the town and turned north here, but why are you so interested, King? The great dog, who had been working as a loose lead, ran up the trail and turned back to his master, asking him to follow. Uh-huh. I've told you we're looking for Old Timer. Is Old Timer a member of that team? Sounds like yes to me. All right, boy, we'll see where this trail leads. Gee! Hey there! Run, King! Run, you have to! At four o'clock that afternoon, it was already dark and the northern lights were streaking across the sky. The team had climbed high into the hills, and ahead of him, ghostly in the weird glow, the sergeant could see a cluster of buildings, a town long deserted. Then suddenly, King began to bark. Just ahead and lying beside the trail was a parka-clad figure. Oh, King! The sergeant stopped the team and ran to investigate. It was a young woman. What's wrong with her? King, she's been shot. We'll continue our story in just a moment. There's nothing like it. Yes, there's nothing like the big moment down on the football field when... This is it. There's less than a minute left to play, folks, and the score is tied. Balls on the three-yard line. The crowd is going crazy. And here it comes. One of the last plays of the game. They're out of the huddle. There's the shift. The pass from center. And, and look at that power dive through left guard. It's, it's over for a touchdown. Yes, moments like this stand out. There's nothing like it. And for breakfast, nothing stands out like a heaping bowl of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Just pour on some milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. You'll say, this is it, a standout. A standout in flavor, crispness. That's because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are giant king-size kernels. They're the premium grains of flavor-rich wheat or rice. And they're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. And like the football team that pours in extra power for a touchdown, wheat and rice shot from guns delivers extra food value. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So ask for crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Always remember to buy the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. The young woman lying in the snow was Nancy Croydon. She was still alive, but the bullet wound in her shoulder was deep. Quickly, the sergeant dressed it and wrapped the woman in blankets. There was an old cabin set back from the trail among the trees, and the sergeant placed Nancy on the sled and drove her there. The cabin was deserted, but there was a stove and a cot inside. The sergeant worked fast. Before long, the cabin was snug and warm. Nancy, lying on the cot, stirred under the blankets. The sergeant had a cup of broth ready for her. Hello. Don't try to talk until you've drunk this. When Nancy had finished with the broth. You... You belong to the Northwest Mounted. Sergeant Preston, at your service. Did Gridley send you after me? Why, no, I don't even know who you are. I found you lying beside the trail. Uh, Are we inside the town? No, about a half mile from it. What are you doing here? Suppose you tell me about yourself first. Who shot you? I don't know. I was following the sled tracks, and they led straight into the town. Well, all of a sudden, I saw an old man. He was up on the roof of the hotel, and 
He was shaking his fist at me and shouting something. Something I couldn't understand. Something about the, the town belonging to him. And, and then the bullet hit me. It knocked me down, and I got up and ran. I ran as far as I could. The old man shot you? Well, he was the only one I could see, but he couldn't have. He didn't have a gun. There were other men in that town, though. Obviously. Do you... Do you know about the robbery? No, what robbery? In Grand Ledge last night. The Northern Trading Company. Mr. Gridley accused my husband... Nancy of... told the sergeant why she had followed the sled tracks to the ghost town. Of her suspicion that the two men who drove the sled were really responsible for stealing the gold. And when she had finished her story, the sergeant asked her a number of questions. Finally... You say the sled tracks go straight through the town. Oh, I only got as far as the hotel, but they seem to be heading for the mine entrance. Oh. That's at the upper end of the street. No sign of anyone, of course, but Brent and Lyndon must be somewhere around. You know their names? I've been following them for a different reason. Whether they stole the gold or not remains to be seen, but one of them must have shot you, so I'm going after them. You'll be safe and warm here. Now, don't try to move till I get back. I promise I won't be more than an hour. The sergeant and King started into the town. There was no sound, no sign of any human being. But the sergeant relied on King to warn him of any danger. We're still looking for old-timer King. <laughs> All of the tumble-down buildings that lined the street seemed to be deserted. The sled tracks led on to the mine entrance and disappeared inside it. Go straight into the tunnel, King. <laughs> When the entrance was reached, the sergeant stopped for a moment to light a hurricane lantern. Go on, boy. Just inside the entrance, the sergeant found a sled. Uh, unharnessed the dogs here and took them farther in. Easy, boy. A lot of side tunnels. No telling when we'll run into something. King never hesitated. He started to the right, and then to the right again. Uh, this tunnel must run through the hill at the back of the town. Sloping down, yes. Donkey! Suddenly, there was a sharp explosion that rocked the walls of the tunnel. It was followed by the dull rumble of a landslide. Hold it, boy. It sounds as if it came from the entrance. Perhaps there isn't any entrance now. You don't seem to be worried, though, King. Still want to go on? Oh, dogs. So we're still heading for old-timer. Go on, King. A few minutes later, the tunnel opened into a vault-like timbered room. The ceiling was supported by a line of posts, and to each of them a dog was tied. With one exception, all of them were on their feet and barking at King. The exception was Old Timer. He was lying down very still, but there was a welcome in his eyes for his friends. Hello, Old Timer. How are you feeling, boy? Hungry? Well, if we ever get out of here, that will be taken care of. <laughs> A muffled voice from the corner of the room attracted the sergeant's attention. It was a man bound and gagged. The sergeant made short work of cutting his ropes and untying the gag. <coughs> oh, thanks. You, Bill Croydon? Oh, how did you know that? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I'm investigating the Grand Ledge robbery. What happened to you? Well, last night in Grand Ledge, a couple of crooks by the name of Brenton Linden. Uh, I work for the Northern Trading Company. I know. Go on. I was working late. They knocked on the door. I figured it was a couple of travelers who needed supplies, so I let them in. They forced you to open the safe? No, they didn't have to. I'd been working. I was just getting ready to put the ledgers back in the safe. It was open. All they did was knock me out and tie me up. When I came to, I was on the trail on their sled. They'd cleaned out the safe. Where's the gold? Up above. Above? Yes, this room is right underneath the hotel. There's a ladder over there. It leads up to a trap door. Are Brent and Lyndon up there? I guess so. They went up the ladder a few minutes ago when they heard the explosion. I have a few questions, Bill. Why did they take you with them after the robbery? Any idea? Oh, I haven't. Had you ever seen them before last night? I saw them hanging around town during the day. So you'd have been able to describe them. Oh, of course. But you didn't actually know them, and they didn't know you. About your son, for instance, and the operation they should have? Didn't even know their names until I heard them talking to each other. There was no way in which they could guess that you would be blamed for the robbery. Me? You have been. The fact that you needed money and the fact that you disappeared at the same time the gold didn't. Gridley couldn't believe that I'd take it. I wonder if he really does. Seems to me that he was a little too ready to assume that you were guilty. 
As the sergeant was freeing Bill Croydon, Brent and Lyndon were walking up the street toward the main entrance of the mine. That crazy hermit again set a blast up on the hill and started a landslide. The opening's closed for good. Yeah, and our sled just inside, wrecked. Hey, a dog team. Someone driving up the trail. It must be Gridley. At last, we'll take his sled for our getaway. Hold, 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 hold. About time, Gridley. I told you I wouldn't be able to leave town until it was dark. Everything all right? Depends on what you call all right. You said this town was deserted. It has been for years. A crack-brained old prospector that thinks he owns a place. Look, just blasted the entrance of the mine. There was a woman, too. A woman? That was Croydon's wife. She saw you leave town last night and followed you. Where is she now? I took a pot shot at her and she beat it. That's funny. I didn't meet her on the trail. If she went for help, she'd go straight back to Grand Ledge. Or would she go to Dawson? The Redcoats. I don't like the way things are going at all. No, neither do we. We want to get out of here fast. All right, where's the gold? In the hotel. Come on, we'll make our split. Jump and drive. What's the matter? He's at it again. What? The hermit. The hotel, that hey. smoke coming out of the windows. Look. He set the place on fire. Come on, we got to get that gold. Right. The sergeant climbed the ladder and slowly raised the trap door. A billowing cloud of smoke choked him. A second later, he was able to see that the room was in flames. In the middle of the floor, there was a large canvas bag. He ran to it, lifted it, and from its weight, knew this was the stolen gold. It was impossible to reach the front of the hotel. He ran back to the trap door and started down the ladder. Smoke, Sergeant! The hotel's on fire. <coughs> Can't stay here. These timbers will be catching in a minute. I have the gold. Help me set these dogs loose, yeah. will you? Where are we going? Back into the tunnels. Yeah, but what if the other entrance is sealed? We gonna be trapped down here for good? I don't think so. <laughs> if the floors fall through, the timbers crash, the tunnels will be blocked. There'll be no way out. Wouldn't it be better to try and get through the front of the hotel? There's no chance, Bill. Who knows? There may be a third exit from the mine. Yeah, but how can we find it? We'll have to leave that to King and the other dogs. <laughs> anyway, we can't stay here. Go on, King. The smoke billowing through the tunnel forced the sergeant and Bill to retreat farther and farther. King stayed close to his master's side and so impressed the other dogs with his authority that they followed quietly behind him. King boy, we want to go out. Out, understand? Lead the way. Out, boy. The great dog looked up into his sergeant's face. Out? For him, it was the simplest command in the world. And he trotted on ahead. Left. Left. Right. Right. But at the end of ten minutes, he seemed to be leading the sergeant straight toward a blank wall. And then, as the light from the hurricane lantern hit it, the sergeant realized there was a door in the wall. Oh, good boy, King. Good boy. What is it? A door. I don't know where it leads. Uh, must be an old tool shed. And there's another door. The light coming from underneath it. Now we'll see where we are. The sergeant opened the door carefully. The tool shed was above the blocked main entrance to the mine. And farther down the hill, in the light of the blazing hotel, the sergeant could see three men. There they are. Yeah. What are you going to do? Arrest them. The killers. I'm sure they meant to kill me eventually. They said so. It's three against one, sergeant. Not quite, Bill. King will help me, won't you, boy? I'm going to take off my parka and I can see my uniform. It makes a fine target. I'm also going to check my gun. Now we're ready. <laughs> Let's go, King. Head erect, shoulders square, with King trotting beside him, the sergeant walked slowly down the hill toward the burning hotel. His gun was in its holster. It is almost an unwritten law with the force never to draw first. The authority of their uniform is enough. The sergeant watched the men closely. They saw him. They recognized him as an officer of the law. There was a hurried conference between them, and then they turned to face the sergeant once more. He never changed his pace. He was within 20 feet of them when Brent cracked. I tell you, he's after us! The outlaw went for his gun. The sergeant matched his draw. No! Brent shot went wild, but the sergeant's caught Brent in the arm. Lyndon had made a break for the corner of the hotel, but King was after him and tripped him up. Hold him there, King! The sergeant picked up Brent's gun from the ground and took Ridley's from his holster. Then he walked on to Lyndon. You can let him up now, King. That dog! Come on, stand up. Now your gun. Sergeant, there's some mistake. My name is Gridley. I'm a respectable businessman. Your here. being here proves that. My safe was robbed by these two men. I followed them here. Oh, none of that, Gridley. You planned the whole deal. Quiet, you fool. You made a mess of it, too. Sergeant, I swear... You can do that when you take the witness stand. The case is clear. 
The miners of Grand Ledge trusted you and left their gold with you. You arranged with these two men to have it stolen and for your assistant to be blamed. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. It was nearly a week later. The sergeant was working in his office at headquarters when the door opened and Corporal Downey entered. Oh, King. Howdy, Sergeant. Just back from 40 miles. Oh, good trip? Fine. Sam gave me your report on the Grand Ledge robbery to read. You know, I think something should be done for little Davy Croydon. Something has. Oh? What? Well, the miners were so glad to get their gold back that they made up a purse for the Croydons. They moved here to Dawson, and Davy's going to get the treatment he needs. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Now, there's just one other place where your report's incomplete. You started up to Grand Ledge to bring old Timer back. What about him? All taken care of. The Croydons have adopted him. <laughs> well, that's good, too. Sorry the old fella can't pull a sled anymore. Oh? Who said he couldn't? Look out the window. Hello, Davy. Oh, Sergeant. Old Timer and I are breaking a record. Go to it, son. So old Timer's pulling Davy's sled. Right. He's happy. So is Davy. And so am I. This case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Here's a taste treat you want to repeat. It's Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals are actually shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. They have a comeback for more nut-like flavor, a come-again tender crispness, and they're good for you. Yes, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are a real treat and so easy to serve. Make sure to have a good supply of both delicious kinds on hand for this coming weekend. Eat the wheat one day, rice the next. That's the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Never sold in bags or bulk. Buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of The Senator Finds a Treasure. The case began when the inspector sent me to check on the death of a notorious confidence man who called himself Senator Blackburn. It turned out that the senator wasn't dead at all. But when I traced him back to Dawson, I found that he'd disappeared from his hotel under mysterious circumstances. King and I set out to unravel that mystery. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow, because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. <laughs> This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.